You were born in the city? No, I was born in Merced, though I don't have any idea, recollection of that oh, at all. Okay. I also, before I came here at age 10, I had lived in Ari Phoenix, Arizona. My wife, my wife, my, my, just my mother and I, and she moved around quite a bit. Why, I'm not quite sure. And uh, my, uh, she and her, my father had separated when I was two years old. So, uh, and then she had been married uh, other times before two or three times uh, before she married my father. So uh, it's quite an interesting. My father was Portuguese, and they told me that if I went down to Mor to uh, Monterey, I'd see a lot of people that have my coloring and all of that sort of thing, though I haven't done it. And then my mother's uh, maiden name was Mahoney, so uh, that tells you something. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my background, yeah. Hmm. Um. So your mother was married several times. Yes, uh -huh. and uh, she had. Uh, I had uh, a half sister and a half brother, and uh, then uh, the, I had a, a also a brother uh, younger than I, but he passed away. Was that in childhood, or was All that? Of the, the, yes, in before I came here at age ten. Okay. Uh, this uh, with the no, with the half sister. The, uh, the half brother was was in the army, and uh, I met him from time to time, but really didn't get to know him. And then the half sister lived with us for a while. Um, she would I'd see her when she was in trouble in some way or another, and she'd come around to to get some help from my mother. But uh, otherwise, we were not. So I wasn't close to any of them. Mm -hmm. Didn't really know them, so I was, I was always pretty much on my own. Um, what what's your first memory? I was thinking about that today. I wondered if I might come up. Um, for some reason, I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, for a while, mm -hmm. right on the edge of the city. I had to be. I came here when I was age ten, so uh, it has to be younger than that. I remember uh, going barefoot and uh, burning my feet uh, on the hot ground and then also standing for too long a time in an anthill, and uh, that was educational. So uh, it's that sort of thing that I remember. Mm -hmm. I came to San Francisco when I was age 10, and my, do my mother was working at San Francisco General Hospital. So what did she do with a small boy to keep him out of mischief? And she got me a job selling newspapers on, uh, right near our home. And then uh, on Sunday, she took me to the Protestant church, the uh, uh, West Side Christian Church on Bush and Divisdale Street. And uh, I was a member there until, uh, and its successor, until I came here um, 17 years ago. And uh, while I was there then, I was active in a very wonderful young people's group all about my age, and some of us are still in contact uh, really? 90 years later. But um, uh, I was just uh, uh, sort of a, a leader in the uh, song and, and choir uh, part of the life as I grew older uh, without realizing what I was doing. But for instance, I never had a good singing voice, but I did make sure that everybody had a song book and do the right page and that sort of thing. Describe your mother. <clears throat> mother was a very hard working lady. Uh, she was a very practical lady uh, in that uh, she had to run a house and work all day and night, and yet at the same time uh, she uh, took it. Oh, and then the other thing that happened when we were age 21 uh, and shortly the children came along, we hired my mother away from the hospital. We paid her the same salary, my wife and I paid her the same salary, and she raised the three girls so that we could be in the store day and night as we had mm -hmm. to be. And so, so we got acquainted. Who was your best friend growing up? Or just the Yes, very good, very, very good. I'd forgotten about Jim. Uh, Jim here in San Francisco was a little, uh, about the same age as I, and uh, he would hang around the uh, corner where I was selling newspapers. And uh, when we were wrestling uh, too vigorously, uh, the cars would stop and tell us to stop, to stop doing it. 
that sort of thing. But we were good friends, yes, Jim and I. Did you know your father? Um, interesting thing, uh, this uh, from time to time there'd be a taxi across the street from where I was selling newspapers. Many times I was lagging nickels to the wall with a neighborhood boy or two, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I could uh, to go over and talk to him, and I knew that he didn't approve of my gambling and these older boys taking advantage of me. But um, I told him that I was holding my own on it and so that. So we, we had that sort of thing, but that was about all. I didn't really get to, until, well, I'll, I'll take that back. When uh, the children came along, uh, I was uh, in my mid-twenties then, uh, then he uh, got, became more friendly. And once in a while, we would, during the summer, uh, they, we would take the three daughters up to where he had a place up in Napa, a little small ranch, and then uh, he would, uh, they would love to be up there, and then I'd go up and visit. Uh, so we got acquainted a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you? You graduated high school at the in the middle of the depression. Yes. And city of Paris, you got a job at city of Paris through a woman at the church. Right. What did you see around you? See around me. In terms of the depression, what was your experience of the depression? Yes. Well, I think because my mother was the sole support, we already, always had always had a depression. So uh, I don't think there was much change there. And uh, the depression really didn't bother us very much. We had enough to eat and uh, we had our activity. Uh, she had her work and I had the church and, uh, and, and selling newspaper and so forth. Um, and when uh, when uh, there was a lot of high, high times, uh, Lindbergh uh, flew the mm -hmm. Atlantic and uh, I got all the newspapers I could and walked around through the neighborhood and sold those out. Well, that was hurry. during your high school days, right? The, uh, earlier. Uh, no, the, this was earlier. That's what I mean, yeah. that was 1927, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that's right, you see. I was, so I was still in suit, 1930. I was, I hadn't graduated until I graduated in 1934. Right. Then in 1934, I stopped selling newspaper on the corner and got a job in the, selling the um, Chronicle, uh, delivering it to the Examiner building downtown. And I did that then all during high school. <coughs> so uh, I always was contributing a little bit mm -hmm. to the, to the, uh, to, to, to mom and so forth. So uh, the depression really didn't didn't hit us that much. Um, when I graduated from Lowell, there was no idea in those days of uh, 19, for, of going on to university uh, the way it be, has become. But uh, uh, I re somehow had a yearn to learn, and so I found a, down near the city of Paris, uh, third in. Market Street, a uh, bookstore, used books for 25 cents that went on every subject you'd think of, philosophy or fiction or uh, non-fiction, all of that. And so for 40 minutes every morning and 40 minutes every evening when I was on the streetcar, which is a lot easier to read on, stand and read than a bus. And anyway, then I, uh, whatever education I got, I got there by reading. And uh, the, the, it was very, very good. The only problem is I have trouble pronouncing words because <laughs> the book uh, was a reading. I wasn't quite sure sometimes. But anyway, that's whatever education I have really came uh, after high school there. Mm -hmm.